Hi guys, welcome to part two of this Angular 7 video tutorial series. In this video we'll be creating the base structure for our Angular 7 app and configuring Webpack to compile and bundle the application. I've posted all of the steps that we'll be going through on my blog which I'll link to in the video description and I'm running on a Mac at the moment but you'll be able to follow along on Windows or Linux as well. Alright, so let's get started. The first step is to create a folder for our project. So I'll do this from the command line. First I'll cd into my projects folder, which I like to keep projects in. Then I'll create the directory. You can call this whatever you like. I'm going to name it Angular 7 Tutorial. All right, if I cd into that directory, and then I'm going to open Visual Studio Code in this directory with the uh, dot. Okay, there's our empty project folder. Let's jump back to the instructions, see what the next step is. Okay, next we'll create a package.json file. Right, now, a package.json file contains configuration about your project such as the name and version, as well as uh, dependencies and dev dependencies, which are, are Node.js packages. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, there's a lot of uh, properties and uh, information that you can store in a package JSON. I won't go through everything in this video, but if you want to know more, I've linked to the, the uh, docs on the npm.js site from the blog post there. All right, so if we go back to Visual Studio, and create a new file called package.json. Right, I'm just going to paste in the name and version. Now the name I've kept the same as the project folder, but you can name it whatever you like. And version I've just set to um, version 1.0.0. All right, move to the next step. All right, next we'll install Angular 7 dependencies. So these Angular 7 dependencies are all of the Angular framework um, packages that are used for running your actual application. So there's the everything that starts with the at Angular are the Angular framework packages and there's some secondary packages down here that are required by Angular. I won't go into the details of each of them in this video, but if you'd like to know more, just below I've got uh, more details about what each of the packages does and links off to the documentation for each. All right, so we'll install them by running npm install and save them in our package JSON with the minus save flag. And I've got the versions for Angular 7 set with the at 7 and the required versions for the other secondary packages there. All right, so if we go back to the command line, we paste in that command, hit enter. Once that's done, if we go back to VS Code, you'll see that the dependencies have been saved in our uh, package JSON file. Okay, let's move on to the next step. All right, next is to install the Ag Angular 7 dev dependencies. Now, these are all of the packages required for bundling and compiling our applications, so things like Webpack and the TypeScript uh, compiler. Um, just as before, I won't go into the details of each of the packages here, but I have uh, some extra information just below with links off to the documentation. All right, so if we run npm install with save dev, that'll save them in our package JSON file under dev, dev dependencies. So go back to the terminal paste that in, hit enter. Okay, once that's done, if we go back to our package JSON, you'll see that that's all been saved in dev dependencies. Also, the place that um, npm installs all of these packages is within the node modules folder, so that's been created and all of the packages been saved in there, along with anything that those packages depend on, which is why there are so many. Now that they're saved in our package JSON file as well, we could 
delete this node modules and then to install everything again all you would need to run is npm install without any uh, any packages specified and that would automatically install everything from the package.json file okay moving on next file to create is the tsconfig file now the tsconfig is the typescript config and it uh, sets the options for the typescript compiler in how it compiles the typescript into javascript um, I won't go into the details of what each of these is, other than maybe the target being ES5 is the version of JavaScript that is output by the compiler, and ES5 is the latest current version that's supported by all modern browsers. So if we copy that configuration. All right, as before with the dependencies, if you want to know more about these specific options, I've got details just below here, and links off to more information as well as if you want to know about all of the compiler options available you can go to this link here and it'll show you there's a whole heap of different options that you can set for the TypeScript compiler. All right, going back to our VS code, create a new file tsconfig.json and then paste in that code and save. All right next. All right, next is creating the webpack.config.js. Right, this is the configuration options um, used by Webpack to bundle up our application and run it through various loaders. So at the core, Webpack just understands JavaScript and bundling that together. We can extend it with using um, by using loaders. So Angular is written in TypeScript and has HTML, CSS files. Um, in order to convert those into JavaScript modules that are understood by Webpack, we run them through loaders, so the TS loader and Angular 2 template loader here for TypeScript files, the raw loader for HTML, CSS files. Um, we also have the HTML Webpack plugin here, which injects our um, bundle that's output by Webpack, the bundled uh, JavaScript, into our index HTML template, which we'll be creating a little bit later. All right. uh, as with the other steps, if you'd like to know more information about each of these options that I've used, they're just below here. All right, so let's copy that. Paste that there, save, next step. All right, so now that all of the parts for actually compiling and bundling our application are done, which is what the Webpack config and TS config um, will be doing, we can move on to actually building our Angular 7 application. So um, all the code for the Angular 7 app will go into a source folder for the source code. So we'll create an SRC folder. And then uh, we'll create an app folder in the source folder. And this will be for our Angular app module. Angular applications are organized as modules. And within modules, you have your components, services, uh, directives, and all your other bits and pieces. You can organize your app into multiple modules. Our app will just have a single module for everything at the moment, but you can split it up into multiple down the track as the, as the app grows if you decide to. Okay, moving on to the next step. All right, creating our first Angular app component template. All right, now app components are what you see on your UI. They build they're, they're the uh, parts of the Angular app that you're interacting with and uh, components are split up into component logic and the component template. The template being uh, HTML mostly and um, Angular template syntax but we won't get into that yet. At the moment our first component will just display a simple hello Angular 7 message. 
when we start our application. So we'll create our template in the app folder, app component.html, and we'll paste in our hello message. Next up, we'll create the logic behind our app component or our actual app component which uh, contains the logic to, for interacting and supporting the UI, the, the template we just created. Um, at the moment, the template doesn't do anything, so it's just an empty class. And the thing that makes this class a, an, an Angular component is by using the component decorator from the Angular core package. Um, the way you use a decorator is you put at component, or at and then the decorator name, and you can pass it parameters. It has the selector app, which tells Angular that when it runs, any time it finds the app tag inside the application, it will insert this component with this template. And the template URL is what uh, binds together this component with this template. Okay, so in our app folder, let's create app.component.ts. Paste in the code and save. Next up, okay, we'll create our app module. Now, as I mentioned, Angular applications are organized into modules, and those modules are collections of components and uh, services and anything else that that module uses. So, an app, an Angular module again, is just a class, and it becomes a module when you use the ng module decorator. Um, modules can import other modules and what all Angular modules, modules use is the browser module. It has some core um, components and uh, Angular features that you need for every Angular app, so you'll always need that. The declarations declare the components in this module and make those components available to other components within this Angular module. Um, and the bootstrap uh, parameter tells uh, Angular which component to boot up first as the core component for this, when bootstrapping this, uh, or launching this Angular module. Again, um, as with the other things, uh, the other parts of this video, if you wanna know more information, I've got links to the documentation for modules and more information about each of the parameters used um, below the instructions there. So if we go back and let's create our app.module ts and we'll paste in the code and the instructions. Okay, let's go back. The next step is to create a polyfills file. Now polyfills are a uh, bits of JavaScript that add features to a browser that aren't natively supported. So some of the features used by Angular aren't natively supported by all browsers yet. So we use uh, polyfills that are supplied in CoreJS and ZoneJS packages um, to support features required by Angular. So we'll put that, it's not part of our app module, this is just part of the Angular application, so we'll put it in our source folder called polyfills.ps. Paste those in there and save. All right, next step is we'll create our main or bootstrap slash launch file. So this is the main entry point into um, an Angular application, and it's what actually launches our Angular app. It does this by calling a platform browser dynamic dot bootstrap module, um, and it passes the module that you want to launch, which is our app module. Um, if you want to know more about Angular bootstrapping, there's a link to the documentation here as well. So we'll create that at the same level as polyfills in our source folder main.ts, we paste that in. Um, you can see that it imports the polyfills, which uh, adds that browser support for the features that Angular requires. Okay, finally, we'll create our main index HTML template. 
um, Angular apps run in a browser, so you need a HTML file at some point. And this is it. So this is the outer HTML for our entire application. Um, it's all standard HTML except for a couple of bits. There's the base href which tells Angular that um, this app runs will be running from the root path of the, uh, the domain in the address bar when it's started. And this app tag, as I mentioned before, the app component up here has the selector set to app, which means that Angular, when it finds um, this app tag, it will inject um, our Angular app component and app component template into, into this location. Uh, the text in between the tag is uh, the text that shows before Angular's finished bootstrapping, so we will just have loading displayed until Angular bootstraps and then injects our app component. Let's copy that. And again in our source folder, index.html, and we'll paste that in. Um, also, it's probably just worth mentioning here that uh, if we go back to what our Webpack config was doing, our HTML Webpack plugin, which is what, so Webpack will bundle up all of our Angular code um, into a JavaScript bundle, and the Webpack plugin is what injects that code into a HTML template, and this is where we tell it the location of that template that we've just created. Also, the entry point that we've used um, when it builds the bundle is our source main.ts, which is what we've created here. Okay. Next, we'll add a start script to our package.json. A start script is run when you run the npm start command, and our command will start the Webpack dev server which is a local development web server for testing our Angular 7 application. We'll set mode to development, um, which is a parameter that will pass through to Webpack, so it won't minify all of our scripts. And we'll pass the open flag, so it automatically opens the browser when it gets run. The good thing about the Webpack dev server is that it also will uh, live reload automatically when you make any changes to your Angular application. So if we go back to our package.json below version, we'll add uh, our start script there. Save that. And the final step is we'll run the npm start command and our application should start and just show us the hello angular 7 message. So run npm start. There you have it, we've got our hello angular 7 message. If we inspect that element, we'll see that angular has found the app tag and injected our app component there. Alright, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.